income-based valuation methods, there are three groups. We have price any ratio method, any yield method, and dividend yield method. So price any ratio method, the price any ratio method is the market value of the share to the annual earning per share. For every company whose share are traded on the stock market, there is price any ratio. For private companies, companies whose share are not traded on stock market, a suitable price any ratio can be selected and used to drive a valuation for the shares. A simple method of estimating the value for a company in the absence of stock market value is value is equal to any per share times estimated price any ratio. I will mean. Now, illustration one value, okay. The any price EPS of a private company that's any per share of a private company ABC was 15 Naira last year. Am I audible, please? Yes, you are, sir. Thank you. 15 Naira last year and it is expected to rise to 18 Naira next year. Similar company whose share are quoted on the stock market have price any ratio ranging from 10 to 15.6. The average price revenue ratio of this company is 12.5. Calculate the value of the company. Remember, the formula is what? A simple method of estimating value of a company in absence of stock market is any per share times estimated price any ratio. So, any per share was 15 Naira last year, right? And it's expected to rise towards 18 Naira. That's any per share. That shows the any per share for next year we are calculating with this 18 Naira. Similar company whose share are quoted on the stock market have a price any ratio ranging from 10 to 15.6. The average price earning ratio of this company is 12.5, meaning we are taking cognizance of average price earning ratio of the industry standard. So a value of the company might be to take the prospective EPS and apply the price earning ratio of similar company. What are they trying to say is for us to use, uh, using, for us to value the company using price earning ratio method, it will be any per share times average price, which is 18 times 12.5. If you have any question, ask before we move further, further, please. Do you have any question? Mr. Fidelix. Fidelis, believe. Do you have any question? Hello, sir. Do you call me, sir? Yes, I said, do you have any question, sir? Can you speak up, sir? I said, do you have any question? No, no, no question for now. Okay, all right. Thank you. So, now, any yield method, the formula is any per share divided by market price per share times 100 over one that's just the basic formula and to calculate market per share is any per share divided by any yield meaning you just cross multiply and divide both sides by and make a um, market per share subject of the formula that's what they are doing let's look at this illustration the any of kickstart a private company were 450,000 naira last year meaning the profit of Kickstart company was 450,000 last year. Stock market company in the same industry provide any yield of about 9%. Okay, using the any yield method of valuation, so just a suitable value. Okay, I want to solve it. Yeah, it's sitting there. And um, I, I come here to explain Please tell him to move. No, can you tell me? Okay, yes, yeah, Mister. So the the any of Kickstart, a private company, were four fifty thousand last year. Stock market company, the same industry, provide any yield of about of about nine percent. 
of their to their shareholders using the earning yield method of valuation so just a suitable valuation for the equity share in kickstart answer private company the price was 450,000 that's what they had last year some market of the same company provide any yield about 9% to their shareholders meaning the stock market of similar industry provide 9% to their shareholders if the appropriate any yield for kickstart is 9% the value of its equity will be 450 divided by 9%. What do they mean by that? They multiply something. Are you with me? They multiply something by 9% that gives them 450. What is that thing? In order to know that thing, you can say let that thing be X. So 9% of X is equals to 450,000. Are you with me? Divide both sides by 9% in order to get the value of X. X will be, so that should be 9% of X divided by 9% equals to 450,000 Naira divided by 9%. 9% cancel 9%. So 450,000 Naira divided by 9%, what do you have? You have 5 million Naira. In order to check whether you are right, just say 5 million Naira times 9%. It will automatically give you 450. However, since Kickstarter is a private company, a higher yield should be possible for the valuation. If an appropriate any yield for Kickstart is 10%, the valuation of the equity would be 450,000 Naira divided by 10%, which is, they are telling you that if the average price, if what they, they multiply something by 10% to get 450, what you need to do is divide 450 by any percentage they multiply it with. That's what I want to speak into. Then, dividend yield method. Dividend yield is equal to... Yes, please. So, did we assume the 10,000 or was it part of the question originally? This 10% you mean? Yes, sir. Oh, no, it was an assumption. The appropriate answer ends at nine, nine, 5 million. For example, this is the question, this is the answer. The any yield of Kickstart is, okay, the earnings of Kickstart, a private company, were 450,000 Naira last year. Stock market companies in the same industry provide an any yield of about 9% to, the, to their shareholders using the any yield method of valuation. So just a suitable valuation for the equity share in Kickstart. When appropriate any yield for the kickstart is 9%, the valuation of equity will be what? The valuation of equity will be 450 divided by 9%. Case closed. That shows the answer has closed. The solution they ask you end at 5 million. Now, an assumption is additional question. If since kickstart is a private company, a higher yield should be possible should possibly be used for the valuation. If the appropriate any yield for Kickstart is 10%, the valuation will be what? 4.5. This one is an assumption. It's an additional. You can also use 15%. It can also use 20, 20%. But what they ask you to do, I hence as 5 million. Is that fine? Yes, I see. Okay, all right. Thank you. Dividend yield method. With the dividend yield method of valuation, a company share a value using dividend for last year and suitable dividend yield. Formula. Dividend yield is also dividend per share divided by market price per share times 100 over 1. Using dividend yield method of valuation, this formula is adapted as follows. Current market price per share is dividend per share divided by dividend yield. A suitable dividend yield for a private company might be similar to dividend yield on share in similar quoted companies. It might, be, it might be more appropriate to select a dividend yield that is higher than the dividend yield for similar quoted companies to allow for the higher risk of investing in private companies. Dividend yield is used to value small shareholding where the shareholder may have little to say in running of the business, business and is interested only in the income stream that it provides. 
dividend yield valuation, dividend valuation method, constant annual dividend. What do they mean by that? What's the formula? Market value is equal to dividend divided by cost of capital. It's more, it's no more than that. Thus, if you ask to find dividend value of the company without growth, what do they mean by that? I'm trying to be as far as fast as possible so that we can round off today. Then another lecturer takes over next week. Then you will be treating likely exam question in detail. The dividend yield method is more objective and cash-based approach to the valuation of shares. Like the price earning ratio method and any yield method, it is an income-based valuation method. However, the value is based on expected future dividend rather than on total earnings. The basic assumption with the dividend valuation models is that the value of share to shareholder is the value of the dividend future, is the value of the future dividends that they expect to receive from those share in the future. If the VA value of the share represents the value of all expected future dividends, this value can be estimated by discounting expected future dividends to a present value of the shareholder cost of capital. All expected future dividends in perpetuity are therefore discounted to a present value at the cost of equity capital. Without going to the mathematics to prove the valuation method, it can be shown that if it is assumed that the company will pay a constant annual dividend every year into the foreseeable future, the present value of those dividends and so the value of share is market value is equal to dividend divided by cost of capital. So all the story they are saying is what was the value of the company using dividend valuation method without growth. Market value is equal to dividend divided by cost of capital. Let's take an illustration. Can somebody read for us? Amaka, read this illustration, please. The company is expected to pay an annual dividend of 48 naira per share into the foreseeable future. And the shareholder's cost of capital is 12%. The most recent annual dividend has just been paid, required. Using the dividend valuation model, suggest what the value of the share should be. Show how Thank this- Thank you. Uh, no, wait, wait. Thank you. Let's take it one after the other. Okay. So based on what I just explained to us, using the dividend valuation model, suggest the, what the value of the share should be. That should, what's the value of the company? According to what I read to us, is dividend divided by cost of capital. The cost of capital is this. So dividend is 48 okay. naira divided by 12. Everybody, can you please type your calculator? 48 divided by 0 0.12. What do you have? 400. 400, right? Yes. Thank you. That should you have answered the first one. Now let's go to the second one. Or I read B for us now. Show how this valuation would change if the expected annual dividend in future years is 50 for Naira. So how this dividend would change if expected future is 54 Naira. That's class work, number one. Or I read the third one. The third one, show how this valuation would change if the expected annual dividend in future is 48 naira, but the cost of capital is 12.5%. Excellent. So, do B and C as classwork, everybody. So, B is 450. B is 450. What of C? Yes. C is 48. C is 384. 
If you don't know how we get those figures, 450 and 384, you can raise up your hand and let us. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Please. So B, show how this valuation would be if the expected annual dividend in future is 54 naira. So the formula is dividend divided by cost of capital. And your cost of capital is 12 naira. Are you with me? Are you with me, Fidelis? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm with you, sir. Okay. So press your calculator 54 divided by 0 0.12. What do you have? Four fifty, sir. Yeah, four fifty. Let's check whether you get it right. Yes, all right. Now the third question is saying how this how this valuation. You know how we got that four fifty, right? I know. Hello. Yeah, the one you say I should do now. Fifty four divided by. 0.12. Hello? We can hear you, sir. OK, so can you see the screen? No, we can't see it. Uh... It's showing down here, I don't know. Yeah, you can see it now. Okay, an alternative assumption in the dividend variation model is that the annual growth will grow in the future. A simplified assumption is that the dividend will grow at constant annual percentage rate. Again, without going to mathematics to prove the valuation model, it can be shown that if, if it is assumed that the company will pay an annual dividend that grows by constant percentage every year into the foreseeable future the present value of those dividends and so and so the value of the share is it's just it's very similar to what you just did market value is equal to dividend divided by cost of capital but the only valuation there is that you are increasing dividend by the cost of capital by the growth rate rather and you are reducing cost of capital by the growth rate. That's why the open bracket, open brackets, one plus growth. Therefore, denominator aspects, cost of capital minus growth. So let's dive into illustration to make it very simple and straightforward. Now look at this illustration. A company has just been paid annual dividend of 48 naira. Dividends are expected to grow by 4% each year into foreseeable future. The shareholder cost of capital is 12%. Calculate the value of the business. Market value will be 48 bracket open, 1 plus growth. Growth is 4%, which is the same thing as 0 0.04. So 1 plus 0 0.04 is 1.04, meaning 48 times 1.04. You are done with numerator. Then go to denominator, you have cost of capital. That's 12% minus 4%. That's 8%. What you've gotten up divided by the down one, what do you have? So quick one, bring us your calculator. 40 times 1.74, what do you have? Hello? Can you hear me? 1.9. What do you have? 1.9. 1.9. 48 times 1.04. What do you have? 48 naira times 1.04. What do you have? 4992. 49.9. 49.9 to divide it by 49.9. Great. Divide it by 8%. That's 0 
624. Yes. Is it, is it clear? Yes. That is where this um, market value is coming from. All right, let's go to another one. In the previous example, if the growth rate fall to 3%, what, what is market value? You know, you used 4% before. Now use 3%. It will be 40 times 1.03 divided by 9%. Because this 4% are, has reduced to 3%. So it will be 12% minus 3%, which is 9%. So 40 times 1.03 divided by 0 0.09. What do you have? That's what for everybody. Yeah. Five four nine. This one. Five four nine. Thank you. So we are done with that. Let's go to this. They said the annual growth. The annual dividend has just been paid. It's written that the annual dividend next year will be twelve twenty nine per share. Another dividend with growth at a constant rate into foreseeable future. Calculate annual growth rates. That one will be your assignment. It's very simple. So what they are trying to do is you have 400, you have dividend. Make growth rates the subject of the formula. Now, cost of equity is 12%, right? The annual growth rate has just been yeah, and you expected that the annual growth next year will be 20 naira. So meaning that if next year is 20 naira, you don't need to factor in growth rate again for your numerator. So it's going to be 400 equals to 20 naira divided by cost of capital minus growth. Then make growth the subject of the formula. How do you do that? It's actually 400 over 1 equals to 20 divided by 0 0.12 minus growth. So what are you going to do now? Multiply this uh, denominator by 400. It will be 400, bracket open, 0 0.12 minus growth, bracket close is equal to 20. Open the bracket. I want you to pay attention and look at what I'm doing. Then open the bracket. You have 48 minus 400 growth is equal to 20. Then make G the subject of the formula. You have... 48, 20 comes there, you have 28. So 28 is equal to 400 growth. You divide both sides by 400. So the growth will be 7%. Exactly. that clear? Hello? Not really clear, though. Not really clear, though. Okay. It's not clear. Okay, do you have your calculator there? Yes, I will make a clean question. Okay. Market value is 400 already, according to the question. Share price of the company is currently 400. That's the market value. Cost of capital is 12%, this one. And the annual dividend growth rate is what? 20. This is the formula for calculating that. Market value is equal to dividend bracket open one plus growth brackets close divided by cost of capital minus growth but since they are telling us about dividend of next year it means you don't need to do dividend up and increase it by 10 percent by growth rate again no because look at this you have 400 is equal to 20 divided by growth and um, by cost of capital minus growth. Is that clear? Hello? Yes, sir. So 20 divided by cost of capital minus growth. Then cost of capital is 12% minus growth. So you just have to. Do you understand it? Do you understand it to this stage? I do. 
Okay. Since you understand this last thing, just make G the subject of the formula. How do you do that? This is 400 over 1. Everything here times 400. Then 1 times 20. 1 times 20 is 20. 400 times 0 0.2. Uh, 0 0.12. Press your calculator. What do you have? Hello? What did you say I should do? 48. 400 times 0 0.12. What do you have? 48. 48. Thank you. Then 400 times G. We give you 400 G, right? Then collect the like times. This is minus 400 G. When it crosses equality sign, it becomes positive. So you have 400 G equals to. This is 20. When it crosses equality sign, it becomes minus. So 48 minus 20, that will give you 20. Isn't it? So make G the subject of the formula. 28 divided by 400 G. What do you have? 7%. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Then, the second one is saying, suppose that the stock market now receives new and ex unexpected information about the company that makes investors reassess the future annual dividend. Investors now expect that the annual dividend next year will be 10% lower than the previous. And annual growth will be 4%. Very simple. What they are trying to say is that reduce the current dividend by 10% for next year, then factor in 4% as your annual growth. Is that fine? So it will be our current dividend was how much? 20. When you reduce it by 10%, it becomes 18. Then your growth is now 4% according to the additional information given. So what is the market price? It's just the 18, 12% minus 4%. So 18 divided by 8, yeah, 0 0.08, what do you have? Eighteen divided by zero point zero eight. Two two five. Thank you. That's where that two two five is coming from. Once you get that, you are good. That's where that two two five is coming from. Now another method is called Godom method. G growth is equals to B R. Uh, R is rate of returns. B is proportion of any retained. That's retained any times rate of return. We give you growth, growth rate. You understand? That's a Gordon growth model. So this is the example here. A company has just achieved annual earnings of 15 era, which is 40%, of which 40% has been paid in dividends, and 6 has been reinvested as retained earnings. Company is expected to retain 60% of any every year and pay out the rest as dividend. Remember, the annual NA is 50 Naira. And the company is expected to retain 60% of 15 Naira, pay the remaining ones as that is it's retaining 30 Naira, paying 20 Naira as dividend. The expected return on investment is 10%. Cost of capital is 8%. Current annual dividend is Current annual dividend is 20 naira. Remember, I told you if you are retaining 60%, that means you are paying 40% out. 40% of 50 naira is 20 naira. Anticipated annual growth rate is BR. What you retained times annual growth rate. Expected return on investment times return on investment, so to say. So 60% times 10% gives you 0, 0.0. So how do you calculate market value? All this story they are saying is just to tell you how to calculate your market value using Godon method. And Godon method says to calculate growth rates, it is retained earning times cost of equity. And 
And according to this question, the return learning rate is 60%. Cost of equity is 10%. 60% times 10%, what do you have? You have 6%. Do you agree? Since your growth rate is now 6%, you know your dividend is 20. So it'd be 20 bracket open, one plus growth rate, bracket closed, cost of capital minus growth rate. So 20 times 1.06 divided by 0 0.02. What do you have? Hello? Are you with me? Yes, sir. So 20 times 1.06 divided by 0 0.02. <laughs> One thousand sixty naira. So that is what that one is all about. Then the last final part is this. Um, very similar to what we have been treating. Let me see. Okay. I think this one is very straightforward. You can leave this one on your for the day. Okay. So let's go to the final question for the day. Then prepare yourself for Pathfinder treatment next week. Now. Pinky and Pecky PLC operate in the same industry, manufacturing children clothes and toys. Although Pecky PLC also has interest in sports and equipment, Pecky do not regard this as a outside bid. The following information is available for the two companies, Pinky Pecky. Current earning for Pinky is 650,000 naira. For Pecky, 240,000 naira. Number of shares. 5 million, uh, oh no, 5 million shares. The second one is 1.5 million. Percentage any retained. For Pinky is 20%, Peck is 80. Return on new investment, 15%, 15%. Return required by ordinary shareholders. That is cost of equity, you understand? 21% and 24. Dividend has just been paid and the retained any has already been reinvested in new get. Pinky PLC plan to adopt the policy of retaining. I expect to achieve 70% return on new investment. Saving due to economy of scale, I expected to be in the region of 85,000 naira per annum. Require return on shareholder with 4 to 20% due to portfolio effect. Neither company is quoted. Now, calculate the existing share value of Pinky and Pecky PLC. This is actually a SFM question. So your own question may not be as complex as this. Find the value of Pinky PLC after the takeover. Advise Pinky PLC on the maximum amount it should pay for Pecky. What reason might a company have to have for buying over another company? not taxation all right solution first and foremost we need to calculate the growth rate for pinky plc what is this? what is retained any percentage on new investment, 
require return by other share of that 21 percent who can tell me what is cost of capital between 15 and 21. Hello, Amaka. Amaka, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. So, what's the cost of capital between 15 and 21? Sayadri. What do you say? So, where do you see 15 and 21? I'm talking of Pinky. The first question says calculate existing share value of Pinky and Perky. And Perky. So, I'm reading this one now. Return on new investment, 15%. Require return by ordinary shareholder, 21%. So which one is cost of capital between the two, between 15 and 21? 21%. Why? Because is the cost of capital of the already existing shareholders. The 15% the is for new investment. Now, percentage annual return is so the cost of capital is actually 15 percent, not 21. Let's read through interpretation of our rate of return that the company will make on its investment. Do you understand? I deliberately pick that question and put it there so that you won't make such mistake in the exam. The rate on re, return on new investment. The return on new investment is 15%. So the cost of capital is 15%. Once you know, once you are able to interpret that, the rest are very similar to what we've been doing. So just since you know your cost of capital is 15%, your return then is there already. So to get growth rate is just 15% times 20%, which is 0 0.03. You have gotten your growth rate that way. Then the dividend, how do we calculate dividend? If they are retaining the profit, the Six fifty, right? If they are retaining is dividend. That's why they are saying six fifty times eighty percent. That is dividend eight percent. You know, you say dividend. Hello. Hello, are you there? I'm here, sir. So six fifty thousand naira times zero point eight. What do you have? 0 0.8 times 650. What do you have? 20. Times what? 650 times 0 0.8. What do you have? Okay, it's 520,000. 520,000. Then 520,000 bracket open. One plus growth rate. So what? 520,000, you open your bracket. One plus. How much is your growth rate? 0 0.03. Thank you. 520 bracket open. One plus 0 0.03. That's 520 times 1.03. What do you have? 535, 600. Okay, divide this by 18%. What's 21 Nine. minus? 21 minus 18. So I said 21 minus what? 21 minus, divided by 18%. I'm just trying to explain how I got that 18%. That's 21 18%. Yes. What do you have?
two nine seven five 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 six. Two nine what? Two million. Now that's five thousand five hundred and fifty six. That is where that is coming from. So divide that figure by five million naira. What do you have? What do you have? Zero point five nine. Yeah, that's where they're getting fifty nine cobo from. So. Yeah, that's where 59 cobble is coming. 59.5 cobble. So I would, uh, the motive of this question, of the treating this topic, is not to go too deep like this, but it's for you to understand how um, valuation is all about, what business valuation is all about, what they can ask. They may not, it's, trust me, your question won't be, as complex as this, but if you also know it is a plus, you understand. So, look at it. Do you have any question? Because the same way you've done yes, for the first question. one is the same way you do for the second one also. Go ahead. Please. So my question is on the calculation of the growth rates. Apart from okay. um, these gradons growth rate is there any formula for growth rate and if there is in what scenario or situation do we apply the particular formula very good good, good question look at the first one we treat we treated market value is equal to dividend bracket one plus growth rates Aside to go down, there is no any other method for growth rate. Rather, they can now ask you to make growth rate the subject of the formula. Is that they give you the growth rate? Or they ask you to make growth rate the subject of the formula? Or they ask you to use go down method to calculate growth rate? Meaning, if you are not giving growth rates and you are not asked to make growth rate the subject of the formula, you are expected to use go down method to calculate growth rates. Any other question? Is that exactly? Hello. You can hear you, sir. Am I clear, please? Question, sure. right? But you are muted. Zainab, you are muted. What's the last question? Yeah, I know. Zainab is talking, but I couldn't hear her. It's okay, sir. It's okay. What do you say? I'm clear now. Okay, all right. My network is seriously so, bad. I understand. It's a general problem for mm -hmm. close to two weeks now. So, if you don't have any other questions, try and practice those additional information on your own. And feel free to contact me if you have any. You have my number. Just chat me up on WhatsApp. By next week, Saturday, another lecturer will be coming to treat Pathfinder extensively with you guys. So you don't make focus with the Pathfinder. You understand? They do repeat questions. They can just plus or minus stuff there, but they do repeat questions. That's a fact. So I don't know if you have further questions now. Any other question? So we didn't hear what you said the new lecture I would be taking outside. Yeah, we focus more on past question and answer. Okay, all right, sir. The likely exam question you will be um 
facing in the exam. That's that would be the own area of concentration. Do you have any question? No, sir. All right. So feel free to contact me on WhatsApp if you are reading this part and any red or clear. Just ask me up. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. You understand my point? Yes, sir. Hello. All right. Thank you, everybody. I wish, I wish you best of luck in your exam. See you.